Hey everyone. So my ex-student Ali is going to be coming in to join us for a chat and I'm just so intrigued by her story because she's a very talented young lady as a performing artist but at a young age she actually delved into the whole business realm of everything and is a teen CEO. So I am just so intrigued by that. So I can't wait to share that with you and to hear her side of the story. All right everyone. Welcome Ali. Hi Ali. Hi. So we're going to delve straight into the questions and I'm going to first up ask you about what made you want to get into the business side of things at such a young age? Yeah, um, so as you would know, I've been performing pretty much my entire life. Like I started dance classes when I was four um, and I got my first acting gig when I was five working in commercials and things like that. So I was always super active and like working from quite a young age. Um, and around the age of 10, I decided, you know, I want to be an actor. I want to move to LA. I, it's my dream. It's what I want to do. Um, and so I started thinking about, you know, how that's actually possible. And particularly I was really gung ho. I was like, as soon as possible, I'm getting out of here, mom, you're coming with me. Like we're moving overseas. <laughs> my dad was like, I don't know how I feel about that. Like you guys are just making it. Dad, you can stay home. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Um, but I started thinking about that and a being so young, obviously like working would be really difficult and the way visas are with going to America, it's quite difficult as a performer to be able to do that. Yes. Um, and also just, you know, understanding that being an actor, being a performer in general, it's not always the most financially sustainable career path. Yeah. And there are downtime periods where you need to have another income source so that you can actually be getting by. Um, and my mom had just left a corporate job at the time and she started her own business. Um, she first started out doing like candles and I was helping her sell them at markets and things like That's that. That's right. I remember that actually. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just, it made me so happy to see her working for herself and doing something that brought her joy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the independence that she had too of being able to create her own schedule. And we got to spend so much more time together too, which was amazing. Uh, and I just kind of decided, you know, maybe I start my own business. I know that it was at the time I was like, I know it's super weird, but why not? It's not like I've had a traditional, you know, life already. Yeah. I've already been doing such crazy things. Yeah. Um, and then, so when I would go to like networking events and things with my mom to help her out, people would always ask me like, how do I use Instagram? How do I use Facebook for my business? Because obviously being a teenager, I've grown up on social media and I understood it so well. Yeah. And I saw that as kind of like my in and my first step into doing something was, you know, I could do coaching, I could manage Instagram for people, um, even just like one on one sessions where I just explain how it works and like set people up. Yeah. Um, so I started a social media marketing agency for startups called Out of the, oh, what was it called? Can't even remember. O <laughs> out of the Square, OTS Marketing. That's what it was called. <laughs> Uh, because obviously it was quite out of the box to be having a, you know, a 11 year old, 12 year old at the time <laughs> working with you in business. Yeah. Um, but I thought, you know, that's my way in. And, and I started to kind of learn the ropes of how business worked. And then I started doing like ambassadorships with other businesses that I was passionate about. And, you know, it all just kind of started the learning process, which I think, you know, whatever age you're at, you have to learn from somewhere. So to be Absolutely. able to start really young was cool. Absolutely. And that's, that's just really cool. You know, like I think, um, again, it's just you, you had an idea, you had a feeling and you just went for it. And, you know, I, I think that's the most important part when it comes to business. You know, if you feel like you've got a message to share or a help, you're helping people, really, because it's, a, you know, when you're talking about Instagram, that's kind of a that's a huge business in itself. You know, a lot of people. Even, you know, I'm learning as I'm going to with my business, but I think a lot of people have mentioned that, oh, you know, yeah, Instagram's easy. I can just post stuff, you know, and then people will see it. It's like, actually, no, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. It does become like a full-time gig. Yeah. And even like, um, as I've gotten older and I've been, you know, doing modeling and things and I've started content creating as a kind of another side hustle, I guess, or kind of a job. Um, it's such a weird realm. It's not really a job, but I don't know how to describe it to people. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's such a difficult thing. And a lot of people do, I guess, have this idea of like, you know, content creators or influencers or whatever word they use that, you know, all they do is take photos and post them on Instagram. 
but it's a it's a lot of work that actually goes into planning and doing collaborations with people and even just like the, the thing I guess I dislike the most about it is constantly having to be on and constantly having to have my phone nearby. And that's something that I'm working with the juggle now of yeah. when are times where it's okay for me to be shooting content and other times where I'm like, nope, this is downtime. This is for me. Yeah, it's the discipline um, behind it. Otherwise we all get caught up in, yeah. you know, it's it's almost like when we, um, we want to reply straight away to someone as well, like it's okay, we can just take a breath and just go, I can, I will reply. Like, it's not like you won't. So it's yeah. almost like you it's not like you're forgetting people and if you don't reply straight away, it doesn't mean that you're not engaging. It's like, no, I, I do engage, but I've got to do it in the pocket of time I have, you know, especially because yeah. everyone's lives are different, you know, because you, you go to university as well. So it, it's like, you've got that. You've got your own time that you need downtime. We can't always be on, you know. We and need I think it's actually, um, it's something that was already kind of a social thing. And then I think social media is just, um, enhance that also is um, you know this this uh, what's the word this stigma about selfishness and about taking time for yourself yeah and that's something I've really learned to unpack because I am a very very giving person and I always try to be a hundred percent there for everyone that I can be yeah and it started taking away from me personally and I started a having no time to look after myself but b just like really being run down and burnt out because I was always trying to be there for people yeah. um, and then social media because you can be in contact with every single person wherever they are in the world at any point in time that yeah. just adds another layer to that of oh I've got to you know respond to this person I've got to email this person back yeah. and it just all builds up and so yeah scheduling that time for me and like just switching everything off has become really important yeah and what you said of learning not not that it's a selfish thing you know like putting yourself first is actually really healthy and um there, there are a lot of people that may not understand what that means you know um because you know who knows back in the day it could be by putting yourself first meant that you were selfish you know just like you said but it is that thing now that everyone's learning because of the um I guess let's, let's say the social media side of everything because it's so high and it's so important for business or even personal or anything like that. And like you said, it connects everyone straight away, wherever they are in the world. So we feel heightened in that respect that it takes a long time to also just switch off because of all of that. You know, well, back in my day, Ali, we didn't have that, you know. <laughs> showing my <laughs> you know so it's we didn't have that growing up so we could just be kids we could just go and do our activities but now it's it's totally different you know for your age group for younger you know god even my daughter like you know things like that it's it's one of those things that if we can all learn how to say it's okay to just switch off and you will engage with those people. And especially I think that that surrounds you with the right people that you need to be around as well because they understand you and that's all you need. You know, a lot of people think, oh, the more followers you have, this, that, it's not, it's not true because if you have your community, people that support you, then it's, you're only going to attract more of those people, you know. So the, uh, I'll move on to the next question for you. Um, so what is your main point of business so is there a special message that you want to get across with starting early in business or anything like that what would what would be your message yeah um so I guess it's kind of twofold um because I've been super business orientated for a very long time um and you know I started doing public speaking and things like that um to reach out to other young people and and show them that anything is possible mm -hmm. um so in that sense um I guess my number one message is to not get caught up in other people's opinions or even like opinions of your parents or your teachers or anyone that has an idea of how you should live your life and how you should follow your dreams or your career. Um, if there's something that you are passionate about and that you want to do with your life, especially when you're young, there isn't anything really getting in your way. There might be obstacles, but they are just that. They're just obstacles that you have to hop over until you get to that finish line. Um, and I've always, you know, my parents always raised me that anything was possible for me and no matter how big or crazy my dream was, it was possible. And I've seen it firsthand. I've done things that no other, you know, 15 year old, 16 year old, however old I was at the time has done. 
Yeah. Um, and I've had people be like, how did you do that at such a young age? And it was genuinely because I knew that it was my dream mm-hmm. and I couldn't let anything stop me. I had to make it happen. I had to trust my gut. So I guess that's what it would be. Trust your gut and do what feels right for you, particularly when it comes to your career and your dream, because that's yours. And that's, you know, you've got your whole life to change your mind or do whatever feels right at that time, but you don't want to have any regrets about not doing it or not going for it when you had the chance. So yeah, trust your gut. Um, Listen to your products. What about what, what products and that have you, you know, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, so my kind of main business for a while has been freedom scrub. Mm -hmm. Um, which people would know from like media if they've ever seen me doing that. Um, So basically we make ethical coffee grinds that are recycled from a cafe in Sydney called the Freedom Hub. Um, And they work with a, they've set up, sorry, a school that educates women rescued from human trafficking in Australia. So they help provide the Freedom Hub. Yeah, it's it's really incredible work. Um, And when I found out that human trafficking was even happening in Australia, I was so completely shocked because I'd been doing work with another international organization at the time um, that was working with that issue. And then I found out it was happening here and I was so gobsmacked um, and was so inspired by what they do because, you know, they need to rebuild their life essentially. And the Freedom Hub gives them the opportunity to do that and empowers them, which I think is really moving. Um, so yeah, we make coffee grinds recycled from their coffee grinds, uh, sorry, coffee scrubs, yeah. um, their coffee grinds. Um, and then we support the work the Freedom Hub does. Uh, and then through the coffee grind supply chain as well, uh, we help support the rehabilitation of rescued child soldiers. So it's a very for purpose product um, and being recycled, it is super um, environmentally friendly as well, because that's something that's also really important. Yeah. Um, and the main message behind it, I guess, is that we can feel good in ourselves and like treat our body to something, but also be doing good in the world while doing that. Wow. That's um, incredible. Good on you. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I've been doing for the last like five years, I guess. Um, and then last year in COVID um, I started studying fashion and started um, kind of opening my mind up to the idea of possibly working in fashion one day or having a fashion label Uh, And so I actually started making uh, homemade uh, masks that are reusable and they're lined with satin, which is really great for your skin, has really great properties um, because I and my partner were both reacting to the texture of like medical masks. They were giving us like rashes and things because we have really sensitive skin. Yeah, I actually had that too. I started thinking, why am I breaking out all the time? Like just in that area. And then I was like, that makes sense. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. It was, and it was so kind of shocking, I guess. I didn't, because we're so not used to wearing, well, I guess at the time we were used to it. Yeah. Um, And I thought, you know, we sleep on satin pillow slips because they're meant to help with our skin and our hair. Can the same technology work in a face mask? Uh, So I started doing that. And again, because everything I do, I like to have some giving infused in it. Um, 50% of the proceeds from that business, which is called One Too Many, are going to support Variety Australia in a fundraiser that I'm doing. So basically, particularly with everything that was going on with COVID, um, people that were already struggling, um, disadvantaged children in particular, that struggle just got emphasised by what happened during COVID. And so Variety is helping kids be kids in a really difficult time in the world. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's always super important to me to kind of have that giving infused if I can. That's um, amazing, Ali. You should be really proud of yourself for that because it's, you know, not only are you creating products and things like that, but like you said, all in the one, you're actually giving and you're helping a lot of people. Yeah. So that is yeah. really, really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think it is, I mean, a lot of people don't know about the concept of a social enterprise. It's really new in the business world, um, which is what both of my businesses are um but it's a really innovative model that allows people to be financially sustainable create you know financial security for themselves but also be giving back because you can't do one without the other I think you can't be giving back if you're not in a great spot yourself but to have that giving back just makes it all kind of worth it in a sense yeah absolutely and I think even just thinking about that that's already giving you know, take away the financial aspect, but just the fact that your mindset is there, you're already giving, you're already actually expanding that energy towards that because of that, that you want to do. So that's really, really cool. Really cool. And I want to take you now onto the next question with that. 
and ask you with with organizing all of those things and doing that at a young age and it, this could be a very personal question but especially being at school with other kids around your age how did you find the uh, the response from them you know did you feel like it was more perhaps judgment or did you have majority you know really genuinely wanting to support you how, how do you think that came across for you back then um so school was definitely not the easiest place for me and I like to be really transparent talking about that because um it it's not something that just I went through um so many people like globally go through issues with bullying and and social issues at school and I guess in a sense like that is an obstacle in my journey that I didn't let stop me from doing what I loved Mm -hmm. um so even like from the time I was young when I started acting and everything it was definitely something that was quite out of the box among my peer group um, and I was bullied quite badly when I was younger uh, and then coming into high school um, you know you deal with typical high school situations um, I don't really like to put a label on it in terms of what happened but um, 2017 is definitely um, was a pivotal point for me in terms of school and in terms of social relations um, so in some senses, it was the best year of my life. That was the year I got to meet Richard Branson. That's the year I went to Necker Island, um, it, which was an absolute dream come true for me. Uh, but coming back from that trip, all my closest friends basically stopped talking to me and isolated me from their group. Uh, and I went through about a year of having practically no one at school. Uh, I considered dropping out or moving schools or homeschooling. I considered a lot of different options, but being academic and actually really enjoying school, none of them really fit for me. Um, and, you know, I had a great support system at home and I had some really dear friends outside of school that helped me get through that. Um, but it definitely was a journey that was full of a lot of judgment, not just at school, from adults as well. I had people at business events asked my mom if she couldn't get a babysitter for me like completely invalidating my journey and what I've done um it's definitely been you know full of a lot of tough hurdles and things like that when it comes to judgmental people but in a way I kind of see it now as a blessing um one because it has made me the person that I am it is why I'm so passionate about giving yeah. and making other people's lives better because I did struggle um, and I know that there are people going through struggles that are like so much more than what mine are. There are people that are, you know, in slavery. There are people that are starving. There's so many issues all over the world that people are facing. And so I like to use the pain that I've had in my life to fuel my fire to do good and help others. Yeah, that's beautiful. Absolutely. And like I said, you are really doing so well you know and I just think again it's I guess there is no comparison when it comes to going through tough times you know like there are certain things that you can feel you know you're allowed to feel that that is your struggle and that was a very very hard time in your life you know and to not compare it to anybody else because that was your journey and that was what you had to go through. But I definitely agree that I think at the end of the day, it's it's one of those things that we all go through such trialing times in our lives that it makes us who we are today. And it pushes us to, you know, I think not even better ourselves because it's always inside you, you know. It's just about allowing it to come out you know, and I think that even now, even, you know, starting businesses and I think, honey, I don't think it matters what age you start. <laughs> I think there's always going to be judgment. You know, it really doesn't matter because even for me now, it's almost like what I'm, my messages that I'm, I'm putting out there to everyone and even just these interviews with people and sharing stories, you know, to allow people in to our lives. I think that's who we are. And that's all I want to share, who we are, helping people along the way, maybe opening people's minds as well to certain opportunities. But that's that's all we can do. We can just be who we are. And at the end of the day, you know, going through that at, at a tough age, 
I'm proud of you as your ex-teacher, I can say, but just as a person and a mom, you know, like it's one of those things that I can say that I'm proud of you because you didn't give up. And not only did you not give up, you actually keep giving back at the same time. So it's not like you've gone the other way to go, well, look at me now you know, at these people that used to judge you and whatever. And it's, you know, and again, people can judge you by your social media to be like, she just posts pictures of herself. No, it's the message. Like if you're reading the messages, if you're looking at the captions, if you're actually taking time, then you can see, then you can see the yeah. message that you're bringing across. You know, and even that's why I wanted to bring you in because I thought it was just so intriguing to hear. Um, and even like with social media for me that is I say that I try to be an authentic voice in a world of a lot of you know a lot of fakeness and a lot of um aesthetically pleasing photos which I guess a lot of people aim to do on on social media Mm -hmm. um but I do try to have a little bit of a little bit more behind it and I do know that there are people that will see a quote that I post one day or read the caption even like a couple days ago I had someone comment on my post that they were going through a really difficult time in their life and reading that little reminder was actually something that they needed. Yeah. Um, and even though it doesn't seem like much, just to know that my words in some way have made someone smile that day. Um, it makes all that hard work and, and all that struggle, I suppose, worth it because. Well, I and someone's seeing you for you. Like, you yeah. know, that, I think that's the, the part where like, because if I've received messages as well, even with someone saying, oh, that, that's a beautiful piece. Thank you for writing that or, you know, whatever it may be or the interview, like especially these interviews, I want to say that I get a lot of messages saying, you know, thank you for allowing us to understand the industry or, you know, just certain things because no matter what, social media, you see someone's picture, you might see someone's video for three seconds and then completely think that you know everything about who they are you know just with what they share out there but what I've been really grateful for is that that everyone that comes on here and shares with me they're so open and authentic about it that it just makes it so much better and and I think again when you can just share who you are and people actually commend you for that that's what you take you know it's not it's not what you hear it's not the other things that you know, want to bog you down. It's just kind of like that, even if it's yeah. one per day, not even per day, it could be one per week that someone has said thank you for that. That just, yeah, that is just so fulfilling personally for me anyway, but I think. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, there's a lot of power in being vulnerable. Uh, yeah. A lot of people see like strength as like a physical thing or, you know, being a, particularly as a woman, being a girl boss or being, you know, a strong yeah woman but for me I do think there's a lot of power and a lot of strength in saying yes I might be happy some days but some days I'm not some days this is what's going on some days I don't like the way my body looks or I have pimples and that makes me feel bad about myself or you know there's so many so many struggles that we all face yeah um being open about that makes it seem a lot less lonely yeah absolutely I couldn't agree more and I'm going to ask you one last question just to wrap it up. So I'm just going to say for your overall message, what would you love to say and put out there for everyone? Um, God, that's such, I get asked this question all the time and I always still stumble on it. I'm like, oh, what do I want to say? Um, I think my most important message, not business related, much more life related, um, but it is so important to start to learn to love the person that you are and you can't give love to other people until you learn to love yourself and you learn to treat yourself the way you deserve to be treated. Um, I've started, I take myself on dates now. Um, <laughs> and I do things that I love to do and I remind myself of, you know, you are a great person and I am confident and I remind myself of all the traits that I do really like about myself um because we all deserve to feel loved if not by other people then by ourselves so do things that make you happy it doesn't matter what anyone else says just be the person that you want to be unapologetically and the right people will be attracted into your life when you do that absolutely honey couldn't agree more couldn't agree more oh it's been so lovely 
It's been so lovely chatting with you and I'm just so grateful that you came on to have a chat and share and, and being so open. So thank you for that. You. Yeah, no worries. Um, thank you for giving me a platform to spread my message. <laughs> If you've been loving my videos, I would love for you to like, share and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads whatsoever. And if you want to be a part of Uncensored and Real's community, then go to my website, uncensoredandreal.net, where you can join the mailing list and receive all the newest updates about content, product and events for 2021. So until then, I'll see you next time.